Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for today's game, Harrow County, the game of gothic conflict. This is by Off The Page Games, designed by Jay Cormier. It plays one to three players. It takes roughly about mm, 60 minutes to play, maybe a little longer, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game Harrow County, you're gonna be playing a area control style game, be selecting one of different factions from each of the different categories, and they're gonna choose one of different boards. There's a whole bunch of like things that get added to this game as you progress throughout it, but the yes. basic form of it is kind of an area control game where you'll be moving down your leader and your different characters. And then a campaign style where you'll be adding more elements to the game as you play through each of the chapters, including more characters and factions and abilities and all of that. You'll and be doing like action selection, yes. going back and forth, selecting different actions you have to, uh, that are to offer, up to three mm -hmm. of them of the four. And then of course there's a unique battling like combat Mechanism. style. <laughs> yeah, you'll be dropping cubes down into the box itself and falling down onto the table to basically score points based on defeating certain characters that are going to be on the board. Uh, it's a pretty interesting, a like, pretty unique style area control game that we'll go and get into, basically explain the main setup of the first game because there's getting there's a lot of extra setups <laughs> for different scenarios. Let's talk about how it's played and then of course our review. In chapter one of the game, you're going to be playing a one, to, one versus one head-to-head -head game with the protectors, with Emmy as the leader, versus family and Levi as the leader. So you'll set up those two character boards on the opposite sides. You also have your sort of extra ability boards here you'll put underneath, and you'll have your little haints to the side, as well as three of them on your home base with your leader as well. Then you'll have your, your cubes, which will be used for battling, and a wild token, and that's pretty much your your area. Yep. And then on the protector side, it's very similar, uh, utilizing the barb and path tokens instead on your extra board there. And then on the action board, you'll place the mason jars, which each have symbols of a specific action, and you'll set the score counter to zero and you won't utilize the extra component there, the spoons, for this uh, chapter one. So you'll notice as you move along, more things will be added to the game. For the main map board, you'll set up your leader and your three haints on your home base. And then on the other side of the board, you'll have your targets, uh, which could, is buildings for the family and town folks for the protectors. And then on each of the hexes that have a little icon, you'll place the different uh, tokens, whether it's movement, strengthening, or the legend tokens on there uh, in order to pick them up throughout the game. Mm -hmm. And the first player, which will be the protectors, will get the lantern token. Yep, everything else is just set aside if you're not playing with it. All the tokens mm -hmm. are going to be set somewhere within reach, yep. as well as the wild tokens, and then there's three battle cubes for each of the families or the family protectors inside that little box there, which is going to be used for this little like fighting combat thing. But otherwise, that's pretty much the setup. Of course, there's a lot more setup as you progress throughout mm -hmm. the story. So let's go ahead and talk about the game. So in Harrow County, this game is actually really straightforward, uh, or at least, at least it seems chapter so. One. <laughs> yeah, uh, and basically you're going to be choosing between uh, one of four actions on your turn. Somebody's gonna start off as the first player with the lantern. They're going to be able to select one of the four mason jars and take that action. The actions involve fighting, they involve spawning and gathering leader abilities, they involve uh, utilizing your board in some way, which is different for each of the different uh, characters or like mm, Action. actions, yeah. yeah. And then there's also one where you're gonna gain a wild token and then based on the number of wild tokens you have, you'll be able to use your different things that you can do. And there's three main things you're gonna do. There's going to be putting power cubes into the tray there. You're going to be able to spawn. Yep, strengthening. You're going to be able to spawn units uh, based on where your leader is or in the main location that you start at. Mm -hmm. And finally is movement. And when you move, you'll move all the units from one area to another or, 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 or not all of them. Or as many as you like. Yep. yep. And that's going to be one movement. So I can go one and two and I can leave units as I go. It's really up to you as to how you want to do that. Um, and that's pretty much the three main things you yep. do in the game. You take one of these actions, you pass, they take one of theirs, and you go until each player or each team has 
just basically flipped over three mason jars. Once that's happened, uh, the end game is going to trigger, the end of the round is going to trigger, I should say, and you're going to reflip these guys over. You're going to check to see if anybody is controlling this middle area, and they'll get a victory point if they do, and you'll be passing this lantern over to the next team slash player, in which case they're going to begin selecting an action. So basically, you're going to get double turns uh, if you're the last player. If you, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also things that you can do, like you can gather your specific victory objectives by bringing it back to your location, and there's certain ways that that happens based on what you're playing as to gain victory points. So the three main ways you gain victory points in this game are battling and winning and removing units or haints from your opponent. But you can also gain victory points from bringing your objective or getting to your objectives, depending on what you're playing as. You can get two points for that. And the final way is just controlling the middle of the board, which is your classic mm -hmm. area control mechanism for gaining points in this game. Um, as far as battling goes, you're going to be storing a certain number of these battle cubes into this tray here. Up to six will ever be present here. At and the you'll end be, of your turn, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And you'll be dropping these guys in when you battle through this little thing here. And this thing actually has a ton of like rows and columns of different separations. Yeah, so a couple not, of blockers. So, so not, not everything's going to fall. Not all of your cubes are actually going to make it and show up, but they could show up later in a different battle. So even if you have more cubes than your opponent mm -hmm. and you think you're going to win the battle, it's not guaranteed. No. And in fact, it can go the that. other way. I know that uh, very <laughs> intimately. <laughs> Additionally to the characters and their families, the, the factions have unique uh, special ways they function. The family, for instance, has a little bag that starts with a certain number of these tiles or tokens in it, and you'll be getting more of them as you gather them on the board. And on your turn, you can use these of pulling them out of the bag and placing them down. Yeah. So that's if you use your um, faction ability yes. mason jar. And based on your board here is how many you will draw. You use whatever action it says. So if it's a spawn token, you get to spawn a hand. If it's a move token, you get to take one movement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, and the power you get to put another yeah. a, a dude there. And you can always choose to, to when you take them out to leave them on your board here, so you'll be able to gra gather mm -hmm. more tokens. But you'll have less in the bag, so you have to kind of yeah. make sure you balance that balance out. Balance that out, and as then, well as it, so it has a bag builder element. Yeah, it's too. kind of like that game. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Quacks. Quacks of Quedlingburg. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like that. It feels a little bit like that. Whereas Emmy actually is going to be focusing more on her trail and like barbed wire tokens allowing her and other well, that's players her legend ability for the uh oh, yeah, token yeah, yeah. ability is you're you're actually when you gather the tokens yeah. you're going to be placing them onto your grid based on what you gather and whenever you take your your mason jar you're going to be able to perform any one of those three categories and that many actions based on how many tokens you've acquired. Mm -hmm. So if you've acquired one, two, three, four of those um, spawn, spawn token. tokens, yes. you'll be able to six spawn actions when you choose this. Ooh. But if you don't want to spawn and instead you might want to move, if you only have this one here, you're only going to move three times. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to decide when do I want to use the abilities and usually it's going to be based on how many tokens you have. And then yeah, like you were saying, there, there are different character abilities as well, which uh, separate uh, the yeah. characters from it themselves. So uh, for your legends action, you'll be utilizing your, your legend sort of leader character and doing a couple of different things. So each one will have a description text of something you can do. And then in addition to how many legend upgrades or tokens you've collected yeah, on you can there, add more to it. you'll be able to have a, an additional ability there. Yeah. And then this one, yeah, this is where yeah. you have the trails and you have the barbed wire. Mm -hmm. uh, based on how many you have, you're going to be able to take these guys out and place them onto the board, either giving everybody a free movement space or making it so it's difficult to go through locations. Impossible to pass. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult. And uh, the, the ability for her is kind of interesting as well. She's going to be able to have her haints drop cubes on the board, and whenever those mm -hmm. cube areas are targeted by other players' attacks, those cubes are going to go in here, thusly making it more powerful when she does choose to attack. A very defensive ability for the protectors. Yeah. This one's also cool. This character here, Levi, yeah. is able to move, and as he moves, he'll be dropping down at the end of his Storm. movement storms. There's also a way in which you can drop storms down when you use the abilities here. So storms not only allow Levi to get um, his main sort of objective, which is to connect the home base to storms, 
to the buildings, but also it slows down the opponent characters, making them cost two movement yeah, in order movement, to go basically. through a storm. So, so yeah, their objective is kind of to place these guys here and get to these little home mm -hmm. bases here so that they can bring them, uh, basically connect yeah. them and, and destroy these homes here. Whereas my guys, the other ones we were playing with in the Emmy, is trying to connect a pathway with Haints from one section of the board to the other and bring these guys back to the location. Create which... a safe path for them to follow. <laughs> and so they each have a kind of a unique way of playing it, but it's also the same thing yeah. as well. So it's kind of a nice mix so, and match. Yeah, it's cool because almost half of the abilities are actually unique to each, each half of the actions are unique to each faction. So the um, token ability and the leader uh, abilities are all unique. And that's basically how to play. What happens is after you play this game, uh, you're going to be scoring points using this marker mm -hmm. here, and whoever gets to a certain number of points is going to win. Seven for chapter one. And then you can play the next chapter, and the next chapter will introduce new things to the game. There's a ton of new things that are presented in the game. There's additional different types of factions and characters and boards. There's different types of cubes and markers, and it has that kind of um, mind management feel mm -hmm. as far as like adding many little things as you move on, increase the number of players, etc. There's et cetera, even et the ability to play a three player version with the uh, purple faction there, Kami. Yeah. Yep. And okay. then there's actually another one too. So there's there's, oh, there's yeah. quite a lot of stuff to this game. It starts adding unique ways of making it, making things more challenging. Yeah. And um, cards and um, there'll be bonus tiles in the middle of the board. Even all like the family is going to be able to start getting better uh, tokens better to token. start the yes. game off with to make their power even more <laughs> useful. So it starts off a little bit like slower, but it moves on and progresses as you go throughout the chapters. But anyway, I think you got a basic idea of how the game plays. Move around, collect tokens, gather Gather your objectives, defeat your opponents in battle, and um, make sure that you're controlling the area here on the board. Or any one of those to get to seven points first. <laughs> and if you do, you win. Let's let's go ahead and go into our review. So Harrow County. This is a very like unique area control game with kind of a storyline, a progressive like chapter system. There's different boards in the game, different choices you can make. The game starts off pretty straightforward, or so you think. There's a lot of choices involved <laughs> yeah. in it, but how you play is easy. Flipping these things over, going back and forth until three are flipped, reflipping them, moving the first player marker, checking to see if somebody has got a point, and passing. But I want to talk about some of the unique mechanisms first before we go into anything other than just like the how to, the, the quality and et cetera, et cetera. First thing I want to talk about is fighting. This thing is really cool. It's attached to the box actually, and there's a little insert inside the box. And the way you fight is you'll be taking these guys whenever you choose to fight. And you can actually choose to fight with uh, multiple fights if you've already used the fight. It, yes. And you'll take these, you'll shuffle them up, and you'll drop them in here. You can pretty much always fight if you and want. And bam, we had a 3-3 three, three battle, but now what we have here is we have two blue and one orange. And that would mean that the blue would actually win. And you yes. can only fight if you have, there's certain rules with how you can fight. Mm -hmm. You have to have at least two power in there to be able to drop. And then you have to remove your cubes in, in order, order to, to defeat a haint from your opponent's side. Mm -hmm. And if there's and a tie, you mm -hmm. might not get points, but you can each choose to remove haints, etc., etc. But the way it works is just dropping these cubes in, seeing what happens, which is always super fun. And actually going in and seeing how they chose to do it was actually really, really cool. It's, yeah. It kind of reminded me of a game called Dead Reckoning as far as the fighting as goes. As far as cubes going through. But I like this better where there were the blockers here. Even though it, it hurt hurt my game a lot. It, it where helps I had, like, later, so though. many more cubes. Yeah, it did help So later. when I dropped two cubes and you only game. dropped, I dropped four cubes and you only dropped two, but you had a ton in here, you had more likelihood of winning yeah. later. So even if he doesn't like benefit you at the beginning, <laughs> it will benefit you later most likely by placing those cubes in there. And while you may only have six out on this at any point in time, you're still gonna have a ton in yeah, here as the yeah. game progresses. Different character abilities. It kind of feels like separate little mini games attached to mm -hmm. your different types of factions. This quax is kind of fun and where you're taking stuff out of the bag. Yes, and you're kind of, based on where you move around the board too is what tokens you're gonna pick up, which is kind of how you can build your bag. You can choose so, to build your bag or yeah. your board. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And um, it's just like, do you want to go and make sure you get to this house or this house or this house? But you have options as far as 
how how you're building your bag and the way that you get there. Yeah, Emmy is a little bit more straightforward. You yeah. get on a, lo a location with your characters. Then your turn, you take those tokens, you put them on your board, you choose this action, and then you take you're, one of those three. You're leveling up that uh, that ability basically. Yeah, and and that's cool that each of the different factions has kind of a unique mm -hmm. style of play. Some of them are going to get more power cubes than others, more haints than others, and different types of abilities from their leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, I well, like that a lot because yeah. you can kind of choose how you want to play based on which faction and character you choose. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, I agree. I, I think what's also really uh, interesting and unique about this game is while it is an area control game and controlling this middle of the board does definitely help, you can choose to play it however you want. You could choose to play it as a combat game where you simply mm -hmm. go around trying to you defeat your opponent. You could win through combat. <laughs> yep, straight up just go around and defeat people through combat. And not do your objective at all. <laughs> you could focus on the pickup and delivery action where you're trying to control certain areas of the board to make characters go back or to get the storms on the houses. Yeah. Or you or can just do... blocking your opponent from doing that. Yep, yep. Yeah. And, and that just yeah, have lots of different options as to how you want all that to work and how you choose to upgrade will make a big difference in that. Mm -hmm. And just the very basic mode of the game, which I don't want to talk about too much about the spoilers and all this stuff, but just the basic mode of the game, there's a lot of options and a lot of choice there's and it a does lot. a really good job of it. Yeah, there's a lot of depth even with chapter one, which is really awesome. Yeah. And going through all the extra different chapters to see what comes up is cool and how even certain factions will upgrade over time mm -hmm. is is also uh, um it's very nice to see that in in games so that you never feel like it's stale like it's not it's never just this game that you're playing it's always improving and up to the point we have a lot of stuff to choose well, from. also scaffolding in so that at the very beginning when you're trying to learn the game it doesn't take you four hours to learn it instead you know it's it's more simple they're saying oh i know how that area control works okay we're gonna move our, our units etc a lot of those things are very um recognizable and then just they just add in a few new things each time and everything's kind of presented on the board so you'll know that okay now that we're in the next chapter or whatever these are going to be things that are going to be brought in and those are like bonuses that you're going to get whenever you flip over your jars oh that's what that space is for that makes sense yep that sort of thing <laughs> and, and and you don't have to like worry about what those extra spaces are because when you're playing the game uh, the basic mode is very explanatory as what you're supposed to do i don't have to focus on these guys just yet okay. but you know that there's something going on later and it makes you kind of want to be more interested more um like in depth uh, in depth uh, what's the word where you like invested okay. you're more invested in the yeah. game want to see what else is coming up next oh what are all these cards that have and what is this <laughs> extra board that we have and all these different <laughs> characters so yeah it does a really good job of all that component quality Yes, really great. Uh, the boards are nice and thick, and I know these are going to be fixed in actual production. So this is a prototype, uh, but these will fit yeah, together really together. nicely. And um, I thought the mason jars was kind of cute because it feels more like, oh, Harrow County. <laughs> Uh, yeah, out, out the, the quality country. of this game is amazing. Yeah. Like, this is really well done. Uh, Mind Management is another one that they, they produced, and that game is exceptional oh. quality. And the hates, they're just little, like, uh, Everything is very faces. good. <laughs> Everything is thick. Everything is nice. Um, with Moonshot, I wanted to make sure that my boards are nice and thick, and this is also nice and thick. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important so that you're not going to have any problems in the future. This game is going to be replayable for a very long time without having to worry about damaging anything in the game. Like, it's just really well put together. Mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate that. Surprisingly, this as well, the um, battle mechanism, what do you call it? Yeah, the box the insert cube, for fighting. The cube fighting thing. <laughs> look, I put all these all these guys in. Yeah. Oh, and look, some orange ones it came out. It works really right? well, and it's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's excellent. So all of the quality in this game is great. As a prototype, this is a prototype. Um, but yes, it's, it's very, very nice. Uh, as far as artwork goes, also an A+. Plus. I, I think all the artwork is great, knowing the different portions of the board, what they are, where they are, where your characters mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. uh, even just the art for the family and for the protectors and the Kami and Hester is really, and really well done. the iconography is really clean and easy to understand. When, once you have it, you got it. You know what everything is in this game mm -hmm. when you sit down to play it. Like after learning just the basics, like we've explained, you'll be like, okay, it's a foot, it's for movement. This is the bite, it's for fighting, if nothing else. And yeah. then here's mm -hmm. one that's a scroll. Where does this go? Well, it's literally dictated on your board yeah. here. 
together, you'll know that these are going to be placed here because it's what the sizing is for these. So even all the different tokens have unique sizes. You know that this is not part of your board because it's looking like a peanut or like a, yeah. And that's a wild token. You're going to get it's more of them. It's a skull. Well, I mean like, no, the, the, yeah, shape, the shape is a peanut, you know, but it's, and that's what I'm saying is the shapes are all different and you know where they're going to be supposed, supposed yeah. to be placed on your boards and whatnot. And that really, really works well for this game. So quality, artwork, everything is really well in line with this game. I have very, very few negatives. I think the only thing I'd say about this game is it, there's a lot of rules and there's a, there's a lot of things you could miss. So we have an earlier version of the rule book as well. So I think that will be remedied soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to look. The, it's, it's, print it's, out. it's a printed <laughs> yeah. up. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be more too... More, there'll be more examples and all of that, which will make it easier. I wouldn't be super yeah. concerned. But like I said, there's just a lot yeah. that, that we went, had to read through. And as you go through, you wanted want to look through all the different chapters and see what you had. Like, is it mm -hmm. actually additional stuff? Or is it just kind of like, okay, here's a new character or you know, here's some extra tokens or whatever and I wanted to see is it actually just that or is there like a de depth there's, to it and unique yeah. changes to the game and additional things that get added and yes there's like a multitude of things that make this game different and unique, which is really, really cool. It's, it's really, like really well done. It's like you're diving deeper into the world of Harrow County. <laughs> yes. So overall, that's my only thing, as I'd say, you know, it's there's, there might be little things you miss here and there, even, even with a nice rule book, just because there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on, you know? Uh, the very beginning of the first game we played, we forgot that these this guy here, as he moves, that he drops down these like little whirlwind spaces. We thought well, was the only way you can get it was like this. I'm like, oh, that's pretty challenging to do, right? Or, uh, I don't know, the fact that at certain times you have like little tokens you have to place down and space on the number of, of, of the leader shards that you get. Maybe I'm just not super smart, I don't know, <laughs> but man, just like small things like that. But like I said, overall it's an A-plus game. This is a highly recommended game. I'm going to give it my seal of approval. I, I think it's really, really well done. And if you want something unique and challenging that's kind of plays that's very similar to things that you know, but with like a bunch of extra stuff kind of included to make it different, then Hero County is the game for you. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Harrow County. If you're interested in picking up this game, there's a link down below in the description currently on Kickstarter. You can also go and check out our links, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button as well to see more videos just like this one. If you enjoy games like this, Kickstarter games, indie board games, stuff like that, then this is the channel that you can go ahead and check out and we will show you that stuff. Are you backing Harrow County? Let us know in the comments below. Yes, I. you should. It, it, it's it's fun. <laughs> if, you got, if you got the cash roll lux, it's probably going to be like pretty, not pretty expensive, but like it's going to be more it's than 20 be an bucks. Investment. You know? <laughs> but if you, if you got it, then you should get it. Um, and that's it. Check out our live streams every Sunday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch and YouTube. Sometimes we do Facebook as well. And you can see us play games literally just like this one. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.